Hi, I am Sherry and this is my stamp studio and today I'm going to be showing you another preview card and it's also another card in the series that I said that was over but it's not over because I can't stop myself um, but it's going to be another card in the series of um, Stampin' Up's 3D embossing folders so if you are familiar with Stampin' Up this past year when our annual catalog came out in June, we started carrying our own line of embossing folders. And so we've been transi transitioning from what was called dynamic embossing folders to 3D. So we've been moving what were some of our dynamic into a 3D style, and then we have new 3D ones. So I'm gonna use today the one that was in my last video, um, the hammered metal. And it's, they're going to be in the upcoming holiday catalog, which doesn't start until September. But if you don't have one yet and you don't have a demonstrator in, your, in the United States, message me down below. If you are on Facebook, you can use Messenger if that's where you're watching this. If you're on my blog, just go down in the comments. If you're on YouTube, just send me a message below and then I can email you or something. I don't want you to leave your um, email on YouTube, but we, I can contact you and you can get a copy of one of these. Because the stuff I'm going to show you today is in this catalog. So it's kind of a preview for you because you can't order it till September 4th, but it's all super cute. So I'm going to use this stamp set. It's called Harvest Hellos and this punch. And you can see it's got an apple or a pumpkin. So it can be either. It can be a jack-o'-lantern. It can be a piece of apple. So it's got like some teacher sayings. Today I'm going to, and it has a little leaf, some leaves. Um, today I'm going to use it for a pumpkin, if you saw the thumbnail. So let's get to it. And then I'm going to use um, the paper that comes from the suite that's called Come To Gather, not Come Together. I know some of you, when you haven't seen the catalog yet, you probably think that um, my spelling is really bad, <laughs> but that's what it's called, because Stampin' Up! is a, a fan of puns. Um, but it's beautiful paper. It doesn't go with this suite. It actually goes with the copper card that I um, posted the other day. And if you um, like to do online classes, then I will have an online class coming up, and this will be the suite that is featured. You'll need the stamps and the dies, and then I will send you free some of the paper. And see how pretty it is? The colors are just gorgeous. Um, but when you do my online class, you get the class, which are these videos, and you follow along, and I send you the supplies. So like today's card, this isn't one of the online class cards, but if it was, you would have gotten the supplies. So as I make the card, you could make it at home. But this one has feathers and wood and flower and just some really fun prints. Um, so this is the paper that we're using today. It doesn't go, this stamp set that I'm using today is just a stamp and a punch. It's not part of a bundle. But I love the color combinations that they've put together with this. And you're going to love it too because I've used um, this sheet here that pulls all the colors of this paper in together. So this is a piece of shimmery white. And I have the pumpkin or the apple. So the pumpkin one obviously has the lines. The apple is just a, a solid. You can see I've made a couple of them already. So I'm gonna stamp this one here on my shimmery white. So you just have your pumpkin. And then I have these pieces here of the designer series paper. And it's double-sided, but for this we're going with the fun check patterns. Because if you've been out, I know it's just August, and I know in July some of the stores started to have pumpkin stuff. And I am a huge fan of summer. You may notice as the um, weeks go by in the summer, my arms get a little darker and darker because I love being outside. I love to be in the water. I just love outside. I love to be warm because often I am cold inside. So it always, it falls my favorite season actually, but I love summer. And so when they start putting the pumpkins out in the, in all the fall decorations, like in July, as soon as 4th of July is gone, I'm like, yeah, people, we still have a lot of summer to get through and I want to enjoy my summer. So here I've punched it three times or stamped it three times. And then you're just going to take the punch and I will tell you the way this punch is designed. It's going to punch out a leaf and a stem. And because I've made this several times, I'm going to punch the, these kind of out of order so I can get my designer series paper off the table. So what I've been doing, see it's punching all these. I've been putting these aside, but it's punching um, the leaves and the stems because I might do something else with them. Because I just hate that I'm wasting all these cute little leaves because I'm not using them on this card. And you can see I'm getting pattern ones. 
and there, see, another pattern on the other side. So I'm going to have a ton of little leaves left because I've made this card a couple of times and I'm making it for my friends, for my trades, for swaps that we do with each other. So I'll come back to that in a second. But just lay these here. And then I don't want to lose all my little leaves, so grab those and put those in my little dish. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to take the some of the colors that are in the paper. Um, and I'm going to color this with my blends. So I have Pretty Peacock, um, Cajun Craze, and um, Mint Macaron. So you're going to start with your dark of each color. And for most of these, they have like a little swish of where the dark is. So take the dark bullet tip on your shimmer white and just give like a little smudge. I'm not going to color this whole thing because I have one already done. I'm just going to show you how I did it. So in these areas where the, that little light is, I just added the dark and then go over to the light color. So here's my peacock. And then just kind of fill in the rest of it with that. That will give you a little bit of shading. It will bleed a little bit. Your um, blends don't bleed quite as much if you're using the bullet tip as they do with the brush tip. And if you color fast like this, but you can see now there's my dark bit. And if you feel like there's not enough dark, and I'm gonna leave a tiny bit white, just a tiny, tiny fraction. But then you can take another little dark squash right there. And then again, take your little light and just kind of blend that together. And then just do that for the whole thing. So I did the Peacock, the Cajun Craze, and then the Mint Macaron. And then I punched that out. So I guess I don't need my punch because I've already punched this. And I'm going to use this one for my last swap with my girlfriends. So then what that leaves you with is I have three of these that I have punched just onto some scrap vanilla. It could be whatever color because these are going to get totally covered up. And then I had these two and then this. And here's the finished one. So you can see that would be cute on its own. You don't even need the designer series paper. You could do this card and not have bought the designer series paper. But here's a tip for you. If you have a hard time putting colors together, like if you look at this and you think, I never would have put those colors together, go back in your old catalogs and look at the designer series paper and look at what the artists from Stampin' Up! who are paid the big bucks, look at the color combinations they put together. So you might not put these together and you might not have this paper, but if you go look at the fall series of papers that are in this and past um, holiday catalogs, you'll come up with some really fun color combinations. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna take your three different pumpkins. And the key to this, I already have ink on my hands. And literally I just stamp through pumpkins. So don't think that, you know, if you get ink on you, you don't stamp right. So you just need to make sure that when you cut these that you cut them all the same because you're gonna mix and match. So for these, I just went, like I tried to stay on the outside of the blue, of the black lines, and then I went all the way up. So now I have these two little pieces here. And again, I went down here. See the bottom of the pumpkin? Like I didn't make them a super severe moon and crescent shape. And it was easier to do when I wasn't talking. So kind of like a U. So see those puzzle back together. And just whatever you do, do the same on all three pumpkins. You can do it however you like or however many pumpkins you want to do. Or you could do the same thing and have one pumpkin on three different cards. So in my little bag of tricks over here, I have the ones I've already cut apart. So there's that one. And then all of my, whoops, all of my leaves and stems from all of the times that I've done this, which are now popping out of my little thing. I should have put them in something else. My throat's still scratchy, I apologize. And then today we went, you know, cause it's summertime and we should be enjoying the season that is summer, right? We went to the farmer's market. I also do Epicure which is a um, clean eating, healthy, quick and ready food thing. And so I have an Epicure event this weekend. And so I'm just trying to think of some fun farmer market kind of dishes to prepare for that. So that was where I was this morning, but being outside kind of 
messed up with my throat a little bit again. So now you're going to take your snail and just cover the whole bits of these. And you just want to make sure that all of the pumpkin has some, like each section of the pumpkin. Like especially these ones on the outside, that everything has some snail in it. Because if the edges don't have anything, then obviously there's not going to be anything to hold it in there. <clears throat> Think we're pretty good and then I'm gonna start with my center one which I did blue and you're gonna kind of go every other and you literally just puzzle them back together you just make sure see that your lines are matched back up so let's do all of the center ones first I just realized I don't have on any lights in my office another reason I like summer but now the Sun's gone behind a cloud it was super sunny a second ago and I haven't even turned my lights on in the summer in the winter even in the brightest part of the day I can hardly go without having lights on so now let's do this one here you just want to don't want to end up with any two patterns next to each other um, but in some cases I don't think we can avoid it because there's only three if you wanted to do one more pattern then I think you could go the whole thing <coughs> and not do that to make sure as I'm doing them upside down and talking at the same time that I'm getting some in the right spots so then we need this is, is this the down nope put him over here I have a feeling this is going to end poorly for me because I'm not thinking, the first time I did it, I laid them all in before I laid them on. This goes here. But I don't think I want that one there. I think, I think I'm going to do one at a time. Let's do it so they don't end up where I'm coming to regret my choices. Make wise choices, people. Pretend that you were talking to your teenager. Okay, there we're good on that side. So now we need, yes, this one goes this direction. Let's see. And then don't press all the way hard until you know that they're where they fit. There we go. Now let's see, let's go with a, another green. That'll work. So that one's done. And once they're done, just kind of press them all down. So let's get these two now. Let's do this one. Let's do this here. This one is my focal one. That's kind of why I put it on a separate piece. So I knew one was perfect. The other two, if you saw the thumbnail, I have one on top and that's gonna be the one on top. And then let's do, and then I have another little secret that's gonna help you. I feel like I don't have enough, but maybe I'm just, I guess there's not that many left. It's not like I could have lost them. I just cut them out before I started filming. But if you follow us on Facebook, we did, we have an event coming up and we went downtown to where we're going to host the event. And I took these little suckers in a little tiny stamp case so I wouldn't lose them. And so, I mean, so they wouldn't get um, bent. The ones that, for my final card, because I hadn't made a card yet. So if you saw that, you saw them before I even knew what the card was going to look like. And then we got home, and I looked everywhere for them. Like, like I looked everywhere. And my daughter's boyfriend lives next door to our event space. So once I couldn't find them, I figured I must have just left them at their house when we went back in to say goodbye to the dog. And so I was rather depressed that I was going to have to do it all over again, even in hope that I remembered what they kind of even looked like. And I stuck my hands in my pocket after 20 minutes of looking and I'd stuck them in my pocket. So all that um, careful attention to detail that they didn't get bent and they'd been in my pocket all of the farmer's market. 
but they survived. So they're pretty sturdy little things because they were in my pocket for a while. Okay, so here we go. So this one is an as is. I'm just gonna leave like this one like this. Now you can see on these, they've got several that are the same. So what I did was I took my light um, blend and this time I took the brush tip and I just stayed inside the actual pumpkin line because this kind of cuts bigger than the pumpkin. And just color that part. So it just makes it a little shade different. So that one I've got that color. This one I'll do it over here. So this has a hint of mint macaron. And then I'm going to take the, do the same with my Cajun craze. And this time I'll do it on this one. And if you're um, working a lot with the copper, because the copper is one of the big hits in the holiday catalog, then you'll want to get some Cajun craze because it is the flat, non-metal matching color to the copper. So there we go. So now they're um, the same but different. Okay. So now I'm going to take these, and one more time, we're going to punch them out. And I really need my take my pick tool. I see it laying over there, but I think maybe I can do it with that. If you have the take your pick tool, you can use the sticky, the end that has all the little um, putty in it. And that's good for holding these in. And just pop them again. And that one wasn't stuck on well, but we'll just stick it back on. And this is another time that you're going to get some more stems and leaves, but I didn't keep them this time because they were just vanilla. In fact, the strip I did them on the first time was small enough that it didn't give me any. Okay. So you just stick it back in there and punch these out. And that one fell off too. See what I mean? It's hard to get that snail all the way over. They have enough on these, especially after we send it through the folder. Because, you know, I told you this is a, a folder technique and we haven't even got to the folders yet. It's partly because I'm shoving them off when I'm sticking them in here. I'm not being careful because I'm trying to speed this up a little bit. There we go. So now I've got these. And more leaves. So you got leaves everywhere. So I've got those. This is mint macaron. And for this, I'm going to go back to the stamp set and I have the mint macaron stamp pad. And then I'm going to, this is going to be on the card. So I'm just going to lay it on here right now just for a little guide. And this is out of the stamp pad. There's one that says give thanks. And then I think this is the apple leaf. But it's on, for us, it's just going to be some background. And I did it once, full strength, and it was way too dark. So stamp off. And what I'm going to do is kind of give myself a guide. That one I didn't stamp off because I'm talking. But that one's okay because it's going to be mostly under there. So stamp off and a guide. So that's pretty good. And then I'm just going to fill, make my own background paper. So just stamp full strength ink and then just bring it over here. And it doesn't need to be perfect because we're going kind of for a country effect, you know, with the patchwork and the, the hammered metal. So this doesn't have to be perfect. Just pretend it's random designer series paper. I will tell you that my husband doesn't know I'm filming because normally I give him a heads up if I am. And it's about time for him to come home for work. So he just may barrel in the door and start talking to me. Because, you know, that's what our husbands do, right? So hopefully if he does that, he's had a good day. Because sometimes he hasn't. Most of the time he usually always has. But he's in charge of supplies. And they've had a lot gone, go missing recently. And so he's been in charge of finding the employees that have stolen hundreds of thousands of dollars of merchandise. So, you know, that's never fun. Okay, so you can see that's going to layer. And then when full strength, trust me, was too much. Then here's another little tip for you. These are going to be my pumpkins on here. And it doesn't really matter where you lay these. But I want to know where I want to put 
my leaves to stamp them. So I laid these on here. Oops. There's just enough snail to stick to my hands, not to hold the paper on. Take your light um, peacock, because it's the same color as the cardstock, and just add a little dot right where the top of your stems are. I'm going to move those out of the way. We're almost done now. Just a couple more steps. And then in the new catalog, there is um, copper, gold, and silver pads. So I'm going to use the copper. And then now I've got the leaf and the pumpkin stem. Which who doesn't like a good pumpkin stem because they're nice and swirly, right? So I've got the leaves. And then with the pumpkin stem, because they're, you know, kind of grapeviney, I did two the one direction and then I flipped it around just so all of them didn't twirl the exact same direction. Like that. Now when I go to lay my pumpkins on there, they'll be in the right spot. But I didn't have to try to do it because if they were photopolymer, you could. Okay, now let's get our big shot up here. Or whatever die cutting system that you use. Okay, and first I'm going to run my pumpkins so they'll look hammered, which, you know, right now, the last couple of years in the um, fall decor and all the autumn home decor that's been out, you know, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, where I get half of the stuff that's in my house, there's been like a lot of the hammered metal look of pumpkins. So these will go right in with what's on trend right now. Because we all want a little trendy pumpkin card, don't we? So just roll those through once. And the nice thing about this is twofold. Not only does it make them look super, super cute, but it smashed them all down into the snail. So now they're not gonna come apart. Then I'm gonna take this piece um, and I'm gonna, the time I did my first card, I ran it through this direction, but I kinda liked the upside down pattern. And it basically is dry, but just in case it's not, because that's where I ran it through the first time, and you can see that it didn't come off on it. But just on the um, off chance that it's not, I'm going to put this in here. So if there's any ink, and then we'll see how dry it is. Because you know that copper ink may or may not be dry. And when you run our embossing folders through the new 3D ones, two tips for you. Um, you always go crease side first. Otherwise, you could snap your um, plate in half, or your folder in half. And if it's a 3D, you either need the blue plate, which is new. And I can't put the links down on this post like I normally do for you, you to be able to buy this stuff. So maybe one more minute and it would have been dry. See, that's how much ink came off. But I liked this. I thought it looked more, instead of the hammered metal, I thought it kind of gave it, gave it a, like a pebbly kind of look. Um, or if you have the old, um, the white ones, you'll need to add some shims and shims are just something underneath it. So maybe three, four, five sheets of typing paper. And then I have some gold paper, some of our gold, I mean, not gold, copper foil. And then this thanks is out of last year's words well words well versed i don't know which one's the stamp set which one's the this is in the annual catalog there is a, also a new one that's in the annual catalog that i don't have and it's really the one i wanted because it said thanksgiving but this way it could be for fall too because it just says give thanks you could easily do this for a happy birthday card if you did um just change the words to birthday but i really liked this little um, highlight of copper on the card I'm just going to roll that through twice. And now we just need to stick it all together and add one more little fun tip for you. I'm gonna stick my scrap paper in here. Get my snail. So here's the, this is the hammered metal side, which is right side up. And then this is the side that I thought kind of looked like um, like river edge petals or pebbles or something. And I will show you, here's the dark. See, and, and when there was a ton of them on here, that was just too much. 
I just like it better with the lighter, so stamp off. That's what it's called when you stamp on scrap paper first. And this is going to go down a fraction lower than I like it because if I do that, I can cover up that one that I did that was too dark. Okay, so now you're gonna take, this was the one that I wanted on top. So do these two. And they go almost to the edge. And then take some dimensionals. So this one that's in the center just stands up. You can tell if you got that one on. Just add this one here so it's popped up above the other two. Take your thanks. When I set my camera up, I just moved my take your my take my take your pick. It's really take my pick because it's mine. But I moved my take my pick tool just out of camera reach. So scissors work in a pinch. So here's my thanks. And it just takes a little bit of adhesive to hold it on. Put it here. And then when I was to this point on my card, I thought, well, I really kind of wish that I had double mounted, added one more layer of color or, you know, here's the thing. When you're a demonstrator and you have lots of stuff, like I really, if you have lots of stuff, go get another little maybe scallopy border um, from your big shot because I have lots of those. But I didn't want to, if you don't have a lot of stuff, I didn't want you to feel like you needed that on your card. So I want it to go with something I already had. So what do I have laying on the table that we've already used? Well, we've already used our blends, right? So let's use those again. So let's get these colors. We don't need the two lightest ones. I'm gonna start with the lightest peacock and you want the bullet tip and you wanna make sure still that you have something behind the cover. Otherwise, there's a chance it will go through onto the, the part of the card that you would sign and you don't want that to happen. So just randomly add some dots and the trick is to keep them in circle form is to just go down and go up. And this will add to the little country feel, like the farmer's feel, the, the festive farmer's market. Let's all go to a bonfire, the, all the parts of fall that we love, the sweater weather, all the flavors of fall, the flannel. So I was just, you know, it's just, it goes with the colors. It goes with the feel. It's kind of a country. It's kind of a throwback look. So, but again, you just want to dot and pull up and it's super simple. It's using a tool that you already have. It doesn't need one more thing. It doesn't need a stamp set. It will make you feel kind of like you did something artsy. And I'm not doing like, I'm not counting. I'm going folky, folk, folk art. So don't go one, two, three, this color, one, two, three, that color, because if you do that, then you're gonna mess up. And all you are going to see is the one that's in the wrong spot. So here, let's do two of those, two of those together, one here. So you're intentionally going just random. It's more fun that way. It's more fun on the card and it's much more fun for you to not be stressed about getting them all in the right spots. And you can see that I've already done the light peacock, but it's not very dark. But the dark peacock, it's not really that it's super dark, but it is the darkest color. And this one right here is darker too. As they dry, they get lighter. So now let's take the dark peacock and just kind of fill in where there's any giant holes. And that's why I do it last, because you don't want a lot of these. Let's do two there. But any place where there was a big hole left. I will um, put the series will pop up at the end of this or at some point during this of all of the embossing folders because they're so much fun. There we go, we're finished. And then you can see them. I will tell you that if you would like to join my team in August, you can order then 
um, as part of your starter kit, you can get the holiday catalog stuff because demonstrators can get it. So new demonstrators can um, order from the holiday catalog when they order their starter kit. And you get a lot of extra things free, both from Stampin' Up! and I am giving, we're not allowed to give product, but I can give you lots of cards. So some of these, in fact, most of the cards that I'm making from the holiday catalog, I'm making extras of. That's part of the reason I have so many leaves because everybody that joins my team will get some um, of all of my YouTube holiday cards as part of their thank you from me. So here's my other one. Here's my husband. So I hope you like that and everybody have a great day. Bye.